Hello, Sharon. Hey there, Sharon. Hope this and shower didn't catch you too unaware. So, I thanks to your warning this morning, I was able to avoid the worst of the downpour. Keeping an eye on the weather. Never being caught unaware is just one of a maid's many responsibilities. <laughs> Dinner's ready, so just wait into your room until then. How come? Make tonight's dinner a little fancier than usual, a welcoming feast of sorts. Anything I can help you with? I'll step out and buy what I need, I'll be happy to run to the market for you then. I'm still damp, right? Don't worry about me, I don't mind. Shopping list and mirror. Alright, I'll be back soon then. Will it fast travel me, or do I have to buy them myself? Apparently it'll fast travel me. It doesn't take you that long to go shopping, right? It's so night time. Oh, hello. Oh? You wouldn't happen to be one of the Class 7 students from Thor's, would you? Who are you? Out for a little late night shopping, are we? You could say that. How did you know I'm from Class 7? <laughs> You're one of the favorite topics at our radio station, actually. Oh, is she like the host? There are plenty of people out there who want to know more about Thor's dashing guys and gals in red. You work at radio station? Hold on. Your voice sounds so oh, familiar. Maybe you know me from the radio? <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I this knew it. summer's turning into a real scorcher, isn't it? To beat the heat, we're going to be broadcasting tonight from a park here in Trista. <laughs> Ring any bells? Yeah, it rung so many bells. Huh? Misty. From a bend time? Literally just called Misty. No second name. Bingo. Bingo. You must be quite the avid listener, recognizing my voice so easily. Glad to know I've got a faithful fan out there. <laughs> I never figure I meet Misty herself, especially like this. I always make sure to catch a bend time. Help me relax when I'm studying. <laughs> Thanks. But it sure is serendipitous, you know, having a chance encounter like this. Just after the rains eased up? Oh? Ooh, maybe I shouldn't mention this on tonight's show. I'm not sure that I really constitute a noteworthy topic for a radio broadcast. Only know her from a bend time, but she just she seems just as friendly face to face. Hmm? Is something the matter? You're staring at me so intently, I feel a little embarrassed. <laughs> well, forgive me if I if this sounds a little odd, but We've met once before in a hotel in Heimder. <laughs> Is she like the opera singer? Wow, I can't believe it. I never figured anyone would actually catch on. I think she might be. Yep, that's her, alright. So you really are her, the Azure Diva herself. Vita Clotilde. Clotilde. Right you are once again. Honestly, even the people I work with at the radio station don't seem to have noticed, so I'm surprised you could tell. Huh, what a surprise. Makes two of us almost didn't say anything because it just seems too implausible. And a star like you end up working at Radio Trista. <laughs> it's just a little something I do for fun on the side. Gotta spice life up a bit, right? Right. The best part is, the people at the Opera House in Heimdall have no idea I come here to do my show every week. How'd you sneak out? So don't go telling anyone, okay? It'll be our secret. Of course, I wouldn't dream of it. I'm amazed no one else has figured it out, though. It's not like you use a different voice when you're on the radio. Well, there's a little trick to it. <laughs> you're not the only one who was surprised, though. Oh? <laughs> I had this feeling I'd seen you before, but I couldn't put my finger on where. You're a bit close there. But it's you, isn't it? You? What does that you mean? Anyway, I have to get over to the studio now. Oh, and 
Be sure to tune in to tonight's Aubin time. It'll be a fun one. Promise. Okay. Wouldn't miss it. <laughs> and give my regards to those two, would you? Those two? Meaning... Who, exactly? Smells like lavender. The fragrance really suits her. They think they'll believe me. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. Oh, welcome back. Hey there, Emma. Did you just yeah, get back too? I just returned a short while ago. Were you out shopping? Were you out shopping? Sharon asked me to go out and pick up a few things for dinner. Uh, sorry about that. I just had to go on the phone. But yeah, where was I? Uh, do I end up taking a bit longer than I expected? Wait, do I smell lavender on you? Uh oh. This is perfume, isn't it? How did it get up to you? Oh right, I guess I must have soaked up the scent too. It's the only thing I can think of. Um, Reen, I can only hope the reason you ended up taking longer than expected isn't because you were. <laughs> Whoa, 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 hold on. You got the wrong idea, Emma. Just happened to bump into someone I knew, I know, while I was out, that's all. Nothing scandalous, nothing I'd be ashamed of. <laughs> I never said it was. Though, you do seem strangely defensive for a man who has nothing to hide. <laughs> huh. I wonder what would happen if Elise and the other girls were to catch wind Please, no. No. Nothing happened. You're just raking me over the coals, aren't you? <laughs> Masterine, I see you've returned. Were you able to get everything I asked for? Sure did. Let me bring it over. Lavender. <laughs> no, that's impossible. Does she know something? Everyone sat down to, uh, to enjoy an especially extravagant meal in celebration of Crow and Milliam joining Class 7. Breaking news, terror attacks follow up. Imperial Chronicle, uh, a representative for the Imperial family has spoken regarding the aftermath of the terrorist attack which took place in Heimdall recently. A spokesman confirmed that Princess Alfin, who was pla placed in the greatest danger on the day, had sustained no serious injuries and was able to return to school as usual. Uh, who are the Imperial Liberation Front? The recent terrorist attacks attack placed both Princes and Princess Alfin in danger and resulted in Imperial Governor Regnet sustaining injuries. While it may seem that peace has returned to the streets of Heimdall, the culprits behind these unspeakable acts who call themselves the Imperial Liberation Front have yet to be apprehended. The elite force responsible for their capture, the railway, military, police, insist they are doing everything in their power to find them, thanks to those who have helped. Chaos might have reigned in Heimler on the day of the attack, but that did not stop a number of people from doing their part to bring the situation under control. Each of these courageous souls has received a letter of thanks from the Imperial government. Extra special thanks are due to one young student who took command to restore calm in Dracos Plaza, and a group of civilians who succeeded in pr rescuing Princess Alfin from harm's way. These people have received particular appreciation for their deeds. I probably don't want to read all this. You can probably read this if you want to pause the screen. Blah blah blah. Fifth page. Sixth page. And seventh page. So the West Sumerian Trade Conference is just over a week away now. A building that tall, exactly what you expect from an economic powerhouse like Crossbell 2. It's a big world out there, no kidding. Still we got Milliam Crow as classmates now, who would see that coming. And it's just Crow for you, becoming way more attached to us than I thought she would too. They were able to form combat links with us right from day one. Worry about nothing at all. It would get a reference on a bend time. Good evening. I'm your host, Misty. 
It's August 18th, and we're winding down a busy day here at 9 p.m. I'm here to give you all the cool you need to beat this summer heat. Looks like I'm not too late to catch this week's up in time. Seems like those hot summer days keep coming with no end in sight, doesn't it? But even this heat can't stop the momentum behind the West Amuria Trade Conference being held in Crossbell later this month. Prince Oliver and Chancellor Osborne will be in attendance for this watershed moment in international business. <laughs> Personally, I'm more interested in the view from the top of that famous new skyscraper the talks are being held in. In some news closer to home, you all have probably noticed the summer showers we're getting here in Trista. The rain's let up for now, but it's managed to push that nasty nighttime humidity right off the charts. It's nights like these I wish I could smuggle an ice-cold beer into the studio. And the director is chilling over there, drink in hand, mocking me. But you know what? Forget that guy. <laughs> anyway, for all you students out there, your summer vacation's probably wrapping up, so I hope you made the most of it. Wait, I forgot that summer vacation at the military academy has already come and gone. Whoops. Still, it's never too late to do something bold that'll keep your memories of this summer burning bright. Hmm. And what about you, Miss Misty? You're probably asking yourselves. Well, you might want to sit down for this one. Because fate had a romantic rendezvous in store for yours truly just on the way to the studio today. <laughs> a tryst with a young man in a park after sunset. Droplets of rain clinging to the grass. I'll treasure the memory forever. Or I would, if I hadn't just made it up on the spot. Chalk it up to a dreamer's poetic license, I guess. Still, maybe one day I'll feel the thrilling rush of a summer love. Gotta keep the fire burning. Just disregarded. Ouch. Wait, is she talking about when I ran into her early tonight? She got quite the playful personality, though somehow that doesn't come as too much of a surprise. Huh, it's kind of weird thinking that I just met her on the street a couple of hours ago. Anyway, I have to get over to the studio now. Oh, and be sure to tune in to tonight's Aubin time. It'll be a fun one. Pro of course. <laughs> and give my regards to those two, would you? Those two? Who are these those two? Yeah, those two. Who are they? Okay, we're back in the nature park, like from right at the beginning of the game. Comrade G. GG, huh. Gideon. Ah, so you've arrived. Good to see you, boss. Oh, you're awfully early. Well met, Comrade V, Comrade S. I see that you've finished all your preparations as well. Smooth as silk. Although you're the one who'll be taking center stage in our next operation without a doubt. Who'd have thought you'd volunteer to go pound the pavement and crossbow? The Red Constellation are gonna be there. I still think I'm the prime choice for this one. I disagree. As I can no longer rely on the power of the flute, it makes the most sense for me to go. Especially when you consider the very real possibility that we may have to accept a necessary sacrifice for the greater good. That is the best way for us to achieve what we desire. You're serious? Ugh. You really are too morose for your own good. <laughs> I could say the same of both of you. Why else would you have willingly plunged yourselves into a struggle like this to begin with? <laughs> I suppose you're right. <laughs> you got us there. I see you've all gathered. Comrade C. Fashionably late, but worth the wait. That makes it a full house. I appreciate your gathering, comrades. The wheels have been set in motion. There is no place for hesitation, no time for looking back. We seek only results. I couldn't agree more. No objections here, either. Goes without saying. That said, I will ask you but once. Comrade G, are you certain this is the path you would walk? <laughs> My heart itself beats with the ideals of the Liberation Front. If my life should see its end in Crossbell, so be it. 
That tyrant must be stopped from creating the vile dystopia he seeks. Dear little Cosgrim, if through our efforts we or anyone anywhere succeeds in that aim, we will have our victory. Then well. May the goddess, or perhaps powers less fair, attend you. When this is over and our victory won, let us toast our success together in the Imperial capital. Indeed. Farewell, my comrades. He doesn't know how to express how he feels, but I understand. Losing your place in the world for doing what's right, and throwing yourself into the eye of the storm, it ain't something I can do. Different paths brought each of us here, but the road we travel now is the same. Let us depart, Comrade S, Comrade V. We each have our own part to play in what is to come. Of course. Just leave it to us. Okay, the plan is set in motion.